There it is. Hey, everybody. Welcome. September 30th. Welcome to the VS Code Weekly live stream. We're so glad you're here. My name is Burke. I'll be your host today, as I am every week. If you're new with us this week, though, we've got a couple of things for you to get started. Everybody else who's here hears this every week. But if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to connect with you there. By the way, thanks to y'all, we passed 100,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. That's freaking awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. I can't say it enough. What other content would you like to see? Would you like more shorts? Would you like more tips? Uh, what would you like? I mean, we feel like we owe you everything. So let us know what you'd like to see and we'll do that. Um, TikTok. TikTok.com slash, there it is at VS Code. Do you have to include the ad sign? I think you do. I think the ad sign's important. Anyway, hang out with us on TikTok. You'll find more of our shorts-like content there. And our meetup group, going strong. We've got a couple thousand people there now. It's awesome. Meetup group's cool because we post a lot of announcements there. And so it's just a really easy way to find out what's going on before everybody else does. And you know, everybody wants to be the first to know. I'm always the last to know, always but not anymore because I'm in the meetup group. Anyway, today, listen, y'all, and y'all is an actual word. Um, it means you all, but it is in the dictionary. Look it up. Um, we have a fantastic stream for you today. I'm excited about this one specifically because I think I set this one up with Alessandro, but um, I've been a longtime fan of this fellow. Today, we're joined by James Quick. I'm leaving out the Q. Is the Q important? Uh, from branding perspective, it actually is. So there, okay. if you search James Quick, there right, is. Take, take James off player. again. Yes, take James then... <laughs> off again. Let me try it again. Take him off. Get him out of here. Okay. So excited about this next guest. Been a long time fan. This is James Q. Quick. <laughs> long time VS Code user. He's uh, always posting tips. He's on TikTok. He's created courses on VS Code. We're big fans, James Q. Quick, here at VS Code <laughs> of your work. And we're honored that you're joining us today. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And what a what an intro to get get a retake. Um, and I'm, I'm, I promise I'm not like, super bougie about that it's just uh if you search james quick there's a football player uh that has better seo than i do so if you search uh -oh. james q quick then you can find me that's the differentiator mm -hmm. you got to have the middle initial i'm that's gonna start right. going by oh. well, my first name is actually thomas so it would be thomas, thomas b. b holland but burke is i mean there's you don't meet that many other burks although i did meet one the other day somebody said yeah my i named my i think it was their daughter Name, they named their daughter Burke. And I was like, mm. hey, wait a minute. I was the, I'm the only one. That's not, nobody asked no, my question. Yeah, not so yeah. special anymore. So what are we uh, doing today, James? Um, I was going to share some of my favorite tips in VS Code. So we'll kind of progress through like maybe like things that people are probably familiar with and hopefully uh, kind of gradually get into things that are a little bit more niche and maybe, uh, maybe find some ones that people haven't seen before. But I've spent, like you said, a ton of time with VS Code, uh, really just trying to optimize like my workflow and know my tools, and have come along or come around to a bunch of things that I think just work for me. That's awesome. And before we get started, chat, uh, James came up with a kind of a cool exercise here that we're just going to call Stump James. So as we go along, if you would like to put in a keyboard shortcut that you think James doesn't know what it does, right? Let's see if we can stump him. Drop it in the chat and I'll be asking him as we go along. Let's see if we could come up with one that he does not know because uh, I don't know, James, do you know all of the keyboard shortcuts? I think I think we will very quickly find ones that I don't know, but I think it would be a fun fun challenge to, uh, to do uh, nonetheless. All right, man, let's do it. Let's get started. Cool. Um, so I've got open uh, VS Code here. And um, this is actually a project. I've got a, a Discord that I have a Discord bot for that I was working on migrating to slash commands. Um, so this is just the source code for that. It's not super important. Um, we'll mainly just talk about the editor. So the first thing I was uh, wanted to talk about is just overall layout in VS Code. So we have the sidebar over here um, that you can do like files and different extensions and debugging and all this kind of stuff. I would say most of the time for me as a developer, I don't want or need that section. So uh, on your computer, if you're uh, Mac, it's command. If you're on 
windows that's controlled, those will work for 90% of the shortcuts that I mentioned. I think there's like one or two that actually do get specifically different, but anyway. Uh, so command or control B will toggle that sidebar. So small thing, but just being able to optimize your space uh, is something I do. And then I get really comfortable with this shortcut. So if I need it, I can open it up. And you can also do directly to, if you hover on these icons, uh, you can see the shortcuts for these individual tabs as well. So uh, there's control, uh, control or control shift G for uh, source control. Uh, command shift D for debug. Again, these are the Mac versions. Uh, extensions is command shift X. Find or search is command shift F. So you can not only like toggle the window itself, but you can also go directly to find, for example, which is pretty neat. Now, James, the, I love the mm -hmm. keyboard shortcut for the collapse to sidebar, which is awesome, but I couldn't help but notice that your sidebar is on the wrong <laughs> side of the editor. <laughs> If only, if only you could see my notes, which you have not seen, so you don't know that you led me into <laughs> another thing that you can do, oh. which is uh, <laughs> to change the location of the sidebar. Now, I like, in theory, I like the the idea of having the sidebar on the right, uh, so that your code stays um, stays right in line. It doesn't shift as the sidebar opens, like where you look at your code from left to right, which totally makes sense. The only thing for me, it makes a difference on which monitor I'm on. Cause if it, if my monitor, if it's on the left monitor, I want the code to push out a little bit further right, if that makes sense, instead of being all the way to the left, cause it's a little e easier to read anyway. Um, so as you were <laughs> alluding to, you can move your sidebar uh, to the right side if you want to. So if people are, if we're looking at code here and we do a uh, command or control B to toggle that open, uh, notice that the code itself uh, the left side of the code stays the same, although now you're getting a little more wrapping uh, with the code because of because uh, of the screen size is uh, is now different. But at least the left hand side of the code stays the same. <laughs> Somebody put uh, Control Q in the chat. Um, actually, I don't know. So I was thinking like Command Q on Mac would close it. I don't know if this is a joke or is there a Control Q on Windows that does something specific? Uh, I have no idea. I can <laughs> let me see control Q. Oh yeah, it does do something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Well, then I <laughs> am stumped on oh, yeah. If it's already. if it's command Q on mine, it's uh, it's killing the application on a Mac. So I don't know. I have no idea what the what the Windows version of that is. Who posted this? Not wearing pants. Not uh, wearing pants. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. We're all working from home. Um, <laughs> control Q. It, it shows all of the activity bar. It opens a quick pick with all the activity bar items in it as text, and you can just pick them from that menu. I've never seen that before in my life. Okay. This is what I, yeah, this is what I love about like knowing your editor and having so many people contribute to different ideas and stuff because there's all like there's a, as much as time as I've spent learning about the ins and outs of VS Code, there's a million different things that I like don't know, like this. That was amazing. Uh, that was awesome. Okay um let's see one of the other things so you, you mentioned like moving the sidebar one of the other things that i do um if people are familiar with like the default layout of vs code you're probably used to the mini map which is kind of like a fast scroll thing um i don't really use the mini map myself so i turn that off uh to save myself some space inside of my editor so if i go back to the page like the mini map is here and this takes up like an inch and a half on my monitor or something like that uh, but I don't use that. Like I can scroll fast enough, I feel like, with my mouse. Uh, so I just turn that off. So it gives me a little bit more space uh, to write code. Another thing, this is one that I don't actually use myself, uh, but people really, really love this is Zen mode. And it's like, for me, like a lot of the things I talk about is like, I want to optimize for writing code and having that space preserved or reserved for writing code. So Zen mode will get rid of basically everything completely. So if I do command K and then release and then do Z, now I go into Zen mode where there's like no frills whatsoever. It's literally just uh, just the text. Now, again, it's not something I use myself, but a lot of people have loved like just getting rid of all the distractions and only seeing your code right there. Yeah, I don't use that one either, James. And I'm wondering if chat, do you use Zen mode? I'm curious. And while you're answering that, here's another one, James. Command Shift K. Oh, I or Control Shift K. Um, rats. I feel like I have a guess at that, but I'm not actually sure. 
I know this one. I, I'm thinking there's there's a markdown, there's some sort of markdown shortcut that is similar to that, although I don't like a markdown preview thing. I don't know if that's it or not. So yes, stumped again. I'm almost certain that deletes the current line. Did I get that right, Chad? Oh, shift I should K. test it. Let me try Command Shift yes. K. Oh, okay. So here, I I challenge this one because of some of the next shortcuts I will show. Um, so people people probably used to like select a piece of, piece of text, copy, paste that sort of stuff with Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V. Um, but did you know that those things act on the entire line by default if you don't select anything? So if I don't select this, uh, like a word or anything, I'm just on this line and do command C and then command V, it pastes the entire line. So by default, uh, the copy will take the entire line and then the paste will paste that line. And then uh, not only can you do that, but also command X for cut or control X will do the same. So I can cut this entire line with a simpler shortcut and command x now the only downside is that actually copies it to my clipboard so if you're trying to delete a line and preserve what's already in your clipboard then uh control shift k or command shift k would make sense sweet uh let's see so another like these are these are small things but like navigating text this is common across most editors and like google docs and word and that kind of stuff if you are scrolling through text you can go uh hold down option to go like word by word to speed up uh, how fast you move through holding down command on uh, mac will take you to the beginning of the line or end of the line and then uh, top or bottom of the file if you up and down i think you have like on windows you'll have um what the end and home and end buttons to take you from start to finish of a yeah, line. I think it's control. Sh I have to actually, have to, <laughs> it's a shame. I don't know this. It's <laughs> like control shift home and control shift in. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. I think that, no, yeah, just control home and control, just control. In. Yeah. To go top of the file, bottom of the file. Nice. Yep. Um, but so a lot of people probably know those, but here's a tip that I got from, uh, West boss a long time ago is like, how quickly do you actually, does your cursor actually move? So if I'm like, if I'm holding down my cursor, um, usually there's some sort of delay before the like repeat kicks in. So there's like, if you hold down the right arrow, there would be a delay and then it would start. And then it only moves at a certain speed, but you can customize both of those things. I'm pretty sure this is on windows as well, where now my key repeat is fast. That means if I hold down a key, it's going to repeat that thing super fast. And then the delay until repeat is super short. So that means basically as, as soon as I start holding down my key, there's a minimal delay and then it's going to start repeating really fast. The flip side of this is if I were to do, excuse me, a slow repeat and a long delay until repeat, if I uh, put my cursor here and hold down right, it's going to pause and then it's going to go very slowly before it repeats that key. <laughs> so those are, they, that's not super helpful at all. So I think it back default, to fast again. Yeah. Yeah. So if we do key repeat fast, um, right now we'll see the delay. So we'll see a delay and now it's gonna start flying. So that was a pretty long delay. And then we can minimize that uh, that delay to be short as well. I think by default, they're probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I, cause I noticed the same thing happens on Windows and I've always been, that's mm -hmm. always been slightly frustrating to me that when you hold it down, it pauses for just a second. Like, are yep. you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm a developer. I do this all day. Yes, I'm right. Sure. I know what I'm doing. I know, I know what it. I'm doing. Just Go to the trust right. Me. <laughs> all right, real quick. Um, I'm going to stop you again because uh, no, we already did that one. Hold on. Yeah, hey, I know what that one is. Yeah, I know what that <laughs> no, one is no, now. No, yes, that counts. There's several people put this in, but Jonathan. Uh, man, I have no clue. Not the first. Moraes, Moraes, maybe. Oh, oh, I mean the keyboard shortcut. Yeah. Oh, the keyboard Marais. shortcut. So yeah. this is this should be what we what we already did actually. So this is a little bit of a softball, I think. Um, on, on Mac it's command, but I think it's the same on windows for control. Um, so command K and then you release both of those and then you do Z and that's kind of hard to document in the shortcuts, unfortunately, but that goes back to Zen mode. So if I am holding command, press K release both and then Z that is going into Zen mode. Well, you didn't stump James, but you did stump Burke Jonathan. So good um, job. Yes. All right. Let's see. I'm kind of looking at um, some of the comments too. 
Um, and yeah, I think someone mentioned uh, duplicate line. So that is also in, in my notes. Um, one of the things you could do is hold down option on a line and then up down to move that line. And then also if you hold down option and shift, uh, again, this is on Mac, um, this will give me a duplicate of that line. So I sometimes will duplicate a line that way. Sometimes I just do the shortcut that we mentioned before of just command C for a copy and then command uh, V for paste. And if you don't select anything, then it just grabs the entire line by default, which is very convenient. That is nice. I like that a lot. Use it all the time. Um, I think, yeah, someone uh, certainly did have just put in uh, all up and down for, for moving those. Yeah. Um, so here, here's another thing that kind of gradually gets really nice. So if I wanted to do something like uh, replace, like rename this variable, uh, this is not a great example because you can do function F2 on Mac and you could, they actually like VS code has renamed variable built in. So I could name this Bob or whatever, and it's going to rename all those instances. Uh, but let's say it's something that you don't have a variable. Let's say like we have user and it's replicated in some, a couple of different places or so, I don't know, like something unique. Let's actually start with this variable. Um, if I were to do a find and replace for that thing in the entire file, I could click it. I could command C, I could command F. So find, I could paste it in, I could expand the replace and I could say, Bob is what we want to do. And then go over here and click like replace all. Um, but you can actually like do that entire process in a lot um, in a combination of a few shortcuts. So if you're inside of a word, this is a hot one. Uh, Command D or Control D will select that entire word. So if you're inside of that um, inside of this variable name, Command D will give me the whole thing. And then uh, if you have something like selected, if you do Command F, it's going to go ahead and paste that into your find. Um, and then another exaggeration of this is if you have it selected, and in my case, I've set up the shortcut Command H for replace. If I do Command H, it's going to populate the thing inside of the find and then take me to the replace where I can type in Bob and then Command Enter, in this case, will go ahead and replace all those instances. So there's easier ways to do this if it's an actual variable name. So this is not the best example, but if it's some random unique string that I know I want to replace all of them, I can combine command D without like command D will select this word for me. And then just command H will go ahead and populate that text up here and then take me to the replace and then command enter will replace them all. I love that workflow. That's a great one. And that's one that I learned from you, James. Really? Yeah. So that's when I first saw you start creating content. That was, I remember that's one that I learned from you. Uh, quick segue here. Control T from John. I think a lot of people put this one in. John, if John's not the first, I apologize to whoever was the first, but. I'm actually, so typically in like in. Chrome, a lot of these shortcuts you'll realize are like, um, will work in something like Chrome as well. So in Chrome, that would be, I think it's a new tab and I guess that would do the same thing here. So that's my guess. So I'm gonna try it and see, but that did not do what I expected. So I don't know. Yeah, me either. That's what I thought it was, but apparently mm -hmm. it's opening the, um, it's opening the command palette with the pound sign. And what does the pound sign do? I, you've got me again. I don't know this. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a totally new one for me. Uh it's it's the symbol browser, I believe. So if you start mm. typing like um type const. Oh, sorry. You're actually this is not redundant or not <laughs> rhetorical. It's uh, not rhetorical, sorry. yeah. Like uh, no 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 in the in the symbol browser. Oh, so, gotcha. go back. so command T const. So no matching symbols. Try um, like maybe get profile. There we go. Yeah, oh, so, so this can... is showing me all the variables and functions inside of this. Inside yeah, of exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I also awesome. thought it opened a new tab to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. But so on this same while we're here, it you can do Control Shift T, which opens the last tab that you closed the same way it does in a browser. We made a short on this a couple of days ago, but that's mm, pretty yep. rad. Yeah. Yep. I have known that one, but I've never used it. I also need to be careful <laughs> not to do that command very often on stream in case the last thing I closed was <laughs> my .env file. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Be careful with the yes. control shift T. All right. Cool. Um, 
let's see there's one so there's one specific setting that i immediately turn off in vs code this is the one thing where i'm like vs code i don't i don't know why we would do that and i forget exactly what it's called i call it a soft open with files and i may blank on what the actual setting is here for files so i'll just explain it um but it's in there somewhere in the settings but if you were to uh one click on a file by default it's what i call soft open where if you then one clicked on a new file it would replace the first one click file so to fully open it you would have to double click that file for it to stay persistent as you switch uh to a different file so i don't like that like if i if i open a file i want the file to be open so i uh disable that and and do that every time i set up vs code that's one thing that i like immediately i have to change just because i i don't I don't know. I don't really use the the idea of like what I call the soft open thing. Another huge, this is what I do all the time. Uh, Command P will allow you to search through your files to open them. So if I want to uh, open up the profile page, I would do it that way. That way I don't have to go through and look, especially inside of big projects, what the actual file is. As I've worked with it enough, I probably know the file name. And then uh, people probably know this, but um, on Mac, it's control tab, uh, but just toggling between your files. And then if you add shift to that, you can go backwards. So you can go forwards and backwards. And so if I'm working in profile and the share file, like um, I don't even I don't even look like I just boom, 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 because I know it's always going to go back to the previous one. And as I've worked through those files, I don't even have to look at which one. I just toggle back and forth. This is crazy. I did not know that. I'm learning so much stuff. I realize some of this stuff is very basic, but I had no idea <laughs> that you could do control tab. Uh, here's a great question from Thomas that I put up a little bit too quickly, but um, this was quite this is quite a good question and I one that we covered a couple. So I'll let you take it first and then maybe I'll add a rejoinder, but this is a great question. How do I stop getting lost in huge files without command F? Um, so there are... And, and you can probably give a better answer, honestly. There are shortcuts to be able to like iterate through um, your, these things actually, uh, the collapsible things. So you can, I think you can iterate through like blocks of these, but that's probably not super optimal because you'll then um, get down to like nested stuff. So one of the things I would do is actually just like collapse the stuff you're not looking at. I do that a lot. There is a shortcut to collapse all of those. I. Don't know that off the top of my head, but I know there is that shortcut. Um, another thing you could do is set the, I think it's the bookmarks extension. So you can set little flags and different pieces of your code in different files and then have a shortcut to toggle through the different bookmarks that you have in your different files. So that could be a cool option too. And um, if you like the mini map and you don't feel like it takes up too much space, I got rid of mine, but the mini map does help scroll through a really big file and give you a better glance smaller but an overall glance of like what the whole thing looks like or yeah. do you have anything you want to add those are all exactly what i would have said um with exception to the mini map <laughs> but yeah there's the footprint i think there's one called footprints there's one called bookmarks two extensions yeah. but thomas i got you on this one if you do alt i don't know what it is on does mac have an alt key or it's uh, your, option yep and left on windows it's alt left and it just it VS Code stores your cursor history. So if you go alt left, it just takes you back to wherever your cursor was before and alt right takes you takes you the other way. So if you're in the long file and you're trying to navigate around, just use that alt left key to go back and you'll find that that's a lot easier than popping open the, the find all the time. Mm. So that does not work here because uh, the option is what helps me navigate by skipping words. But I think somebody has this. I was trying to remember what it was. Justin in the chat. Is saying shift alt and then brackets. Well, that didn't work. So if that's I to collapse that, the. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what um, this shift is on Windows. It may, maybe it's different on Mac. But so there's one more Mac. thing that allows you to jump from bracket to rack to bracket. I can't remember that shortcut either. But you do have a shortcut where you can jump from bracket to bracket. You can also, I sorry, I don't remember this shortcut right off the top of my head. But there's a way to like if I select this word, then I can expand my search to be everything inside of this quote. Then I can expand that search to be everything inside of this object and then expand. And I say search, it's actually a highlight. So you like start here and then get bigger and bigger and it highlights the whole thing for you. So if you're inside of a function and you want to highlight the entire function, you could like expand to grab that entire thing. But I can't remember exactly what that is off the top of my head. Yeah, that's good. Uh, one more just to add this here. 
Uh, yeah, regions to group related code is also great, Thomas. This is a fantastic one as well. Good tip. Nice. Yep. Um, let's see. So Emmet snippets are built in. They're awesome. Um, use them a lot. Uh, I know we're a little short on time. I would show you like some fancy Emmet snippets, but if you get comfortable with Emmet, you can write a heck of a lot of uh, HTML, particularly with like really short snippets. Um, auto imports is really, really cool. So um, I almost never write an import statement myself. So if I wanted to get the user table, um, I can now enter. VS Code is going to go and grab that for me. The only potential gripe I have with that is that it leaves the original text instead of replacing that. Um, so if I'm doing the auto import up here and I'm just trying to get the auto import, then I don't need this text. But if I were actually trying to use this thing later on, it would be helpful for it to stay. So just in this specific uh, scenario where I'm only typing it to get the import, it's staying there. I then go and delete it. But again, like command X will get rid of that thing really fast. Yeah, those auto imports are magical. Love that. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of C sharp coding for people yeah. who use C sharp. They're used to that, right? VS Code, we've been importing in JavaScript for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's a luxury. A luxury. It is. Yes. Um, so I think a, a couple of people, I'm going to make sure I don't save any of this work that I've done. <laughs> um, uh, I think a couple of people have mentioned like command or control W will close the current file. That in conjunction with um, control tab to be able to tab through these is really nice. And then the ability to do command P to open up a new file if I need to. Now, I'm super comfortable with that workflow. A lot of people are comfortable with that workflow as well. What I did is customize my terminal to give me the exact same workflow with the exact same commands. So the shortcuts that I set up are now contextual to the point where they only work if I'm inside or they only do this specific thing if I'm inside of the terminal itself. And what that is, is I can do uh, command N will give me a new terminal tab. So that's the exact same as what I do for a new file up here. I've got this set up to use the advanced file utils thing. So it gives me a GUI for choosing what directory and stuff, but my same command will give me a new tab. And then I can use my control tab to tab back and forth between these. So I know I've got, hey, the code is running on this one. I'm doing like get pushes and stuff on this other one. And I can tab through those the exact same way I would a file inside of the editor. And lastly, I set up um, command W to close the tab when I'm contextually inside of the terminal. So this way, my workflow from being up here in text editor land and terminal, the exact same shortcuts do more or less the exact same thing, just with terminal windows versus um, open file pages. Yeah, that's a really nice one. I didn't know that either. I was having trouble figuring out how to toggle between terminal windows. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then much. control and tilde on Mac will show and hide. Yeah. All of your all of your toggling things are super important, or at least to me they are. All right, I got another one for you. Again, not wearing pants is at it again. Control J. I have no idea. I d yeah, I don't either. Uh, let's try it. I don't know if I need to select anything or not, but. Command J, wait, did it toggle the terminal? Does that work as well? I think it just toggles the, like the control shift back tick gives you the terminal every time. I think control J just toggles that bottom panel and whatever you mm -hmm. had highlighted. So highlight problems and then hit control J. Yeah, so let's close that. Okay, yeah. and then if I close it, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Got us again, man. Yeah, I like that. All right. And and the control tilde is it's a tough one like with your fingers to go from here to here. So command J is a little bit easier. I like that. Very cool. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, someone's put in the chat um, control or command and slash. That is uh, lifesaver. So that is uh, comments. So if I just do that command, I uh, will go ahead and comment this thing. If I were to select a few different lines of code, um, same thing. It'll go ahead and comment the entire thing. I feel like I had another. At some point, I had another shortcut associated with comments. Well, let's see. We've got two minutes left here, and we got a hard stop. I'm just reading through the comments. There's so many. Mm -hmm. um, what is yeah, this? Yeah, time has flown. Is this the this is the opposite of what you just did, isn't it? Isn't that what I just did? I think that's no, you the, did the other way, didn't you? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I don't know. Oh, this is to duplicate to the other side. Nice. Um, did not know that. <laughs> There are shortcuts to move. I think I think there's another shortcut to do that or command two. Eh, okay, so your command two will open up a new thing. Anyway. Well, um, 
James, we got we got a hard stop here. So uh, sixty seconds left. Anything that uh, you want the you want the chat to know here? Any place you want to send people, or this is your chance to <laughs> go all out? Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> to shamelessly plug yourself. Yes, uh, James Key Quick on most things: Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. You mentioned TikTok earlier. Um, that's been a lot of fun to work with. I do have a course on VS Code. It's a little has been updated in a year, but all the stuff that's there, I think, pretty much still holds true. Um, so you can find that on my personal site on uh, jamesqquick.com. And then under the courses page, there'll be a link to uh, to the VS Code course. But yeah, James Q Quick on most places. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us, James Q Quick. Y'all, everybody follow James on Twitter if you're not. Uh, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere you can find him. Don't forget the Q. Thank you, chat. We love you. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us again. And we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>